Sometimes you just want a simple order form on your site. You don't want any of the hubbub of a shopping cart. You don't want to deal with third party solutions. How do you do it? Let's talk about the simplest way to put order forms, donation forms, and things like that on your site. Well, it has been a bit since I've made a video here for the YouTube channel, so it's time to kind of try to get this thing back going. Basically, I've been really busy with working with client sites and building a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and so that's just sort of the way that it goes. But one of the things that I've done, this is one of my volunteer clients, so to speak. I've got a local homeschooling center um, that I'm basically their webmaster for, and one of the things that I needed to do recently was create an order form in order to sell tickets tickets for their upcoming winter drama play. Now, when, and I've dealt with this with clients before too, where they need to create a simple way to just collect payments on their site, maybe for uh, charitable donations or just to sell a service or something like that. And what ends up happening in a lot of cases when I've seen them try to do this themselves is that they end up going the real simplistic route, like just embedding a PayPal button which is not really a very, it's very kind of unprofessional. You can't really collect any information uh, while they're doing it. And so it doesn't work that great. Or they end up installing an entire shopping cart system like WooCommerce or Easy Digital Downloads or something like that in order to sell one or two things. And, and they, you know, so that's the other end of the spectrum. And it's just, you're kind of over-engineering it. It's just too many things and a big old plug in like WooCommerce just to sell a couple of things. So you don't need to do that. What I did for this local homeschooling center was that I used a forms plugin. And in my case, I used Fluent Forms to build an order form and it works great. Now, Fluent Forms is not the only option out there. You got Gravity Forms, WP Forms, Formidable Forms, Ninja Forms. I mean, there's a bunch of these things out there. I just prefer Fluent Forms myself and it does a really good job. It integrates with a lot of stuff and I wanna to talk to you about using a Forms plugin to possibly solve your order form problems. So first of all, I want to discuss the pros and cons here. So obviously there's there's definitely some pros to using a forms plugin to sell things. Uh, first of all, you can ask for whatever data that you want because these are forms plugins. So you can customize it, ask for custom data that's specific to you fulfilling that order and it's all built right into the order form. So it's really nice and easy for people. Um, you can send that order data any place that you want because most of these forms plugins will integrate with all kinds of outside systems. Uh, you can obviously send email notifications anywhere that you want, obviously to yourself, but you could send it to team members if you have them. If you are using an outside supplier for order fulfillment, you can send them a notification. Obviously send a receipt to your customer. It's all done right there in the forms plugin. Um, you can add that customer to your email list very easily because all these forms plugins integrate with a lot of email service providers out there. Um, you can obviously process the payment because these things are going to integrate with Stripe, PayPal, and often many other options as well. And then you can also send that person to a thank you page, giving them an order summary. You can customize that thank you page based on what they ordered what more do you need really? I mean, it's one of those things and you can, by the way, do all that without having to install an entire shopping cart plugin with all the overhead that comes along with that. Now, obviously there's the flip side as well. Uh, something like WooCommerce is obviously designed for a pretty wide product catalog, all kinds of different product types. So if you want, need a full e-commerce setup, obviously a Forms plugin is not gonna work for you. A Forms plugin, it's pretty much going to be a good fit if you, you know, you sell just a handful of things, you know, you do, or you need a donation form. It's something like that. It's gotta be a simpler thing. Another thing is that a forms plugin, when people uh, order, it's basically going to go into a table format. It's, you know, it, it, almost like a spreadsheet. And you can export those entries. You can also view them inside the interface of that plugin. But they're basically form entries. It isn't as if they're going in there with receipts and you don't have that relationship of a customer that could have potentially multiple orders and you kind of view their order history in a nice clean way like you can with WooCommerce. It's just a little bit different in how it actually works. 
Um, another thing is that you're not going to have that full funnel experience because, you know, a lot of shopping carts have the ability to do one click upsells and upsells in general, cross sells, down sells, things like that. You're not going to have that with a Formers plugin because it's not really designed to do stuff like that. The other thing is that an e-commerce package is obviously going to have all kinds of analytics built into it for uh, customer lifetime value, average order value, what products are selling the best best, all kinds of stuff like that. A Forms plugin is not going to give that to you because that's not its use case. A Forms plugin is going to help you make a simple order form that will provide a nice easy experience for people to buy certain products, usually not much more than a few at a time. It's not a shopping cart. They're not going to add a few things to their cart and then continue to surf their site and then they buy them all at once. It's not a shopping cart. It's a very simple, here's your order form, check off what you want to buy, buy it and pay. That's what an order, that's what a Formers plugin does. If you need more than that, you're going to need something more robust. Okay, so let me give you an idea of what I actually built here. It's very simple. It's just a drama ticket order form. We didn't do a lot to make this look all pretty or anything like that. But if you scroll all down, here's the order form. Very simple name, you know, email, basic stuff. Now we could ask anything that we want here, but we don't need to know that many things. We need to know which uh, show they plan to attend so we know what uh, show to register their tickets for. And then these are the uh, the things here. They're, they're, they're offering a family pass, so I've got to drop down here if they want it. But you can see that if I select it, it adds it to this order summary here. Uh, it's actually giving us a summary of how much they're willing to pay or how much they're going to be paying based on what they choose. Um, th basically, these are four different products. There's a family pass, there's the premium tickets, and you can see as I add these things, it just gets added to the order. You got an order summary here, got a credit card, which I would enter. This is coming right through their Stripe integration. And then if they do that, it pays and they're done. Okay, it's a very, very simple thing. Um, and this was built using Fluent Forms. Now, in order to use this functionality of Fluent Forms, you first need to go to your global settings, you need to go to payment settings, and you need to make sure that your payment module is turned on, okay? Now, if you first come here for the first time, it may not show any of this. It may just have a big old box asking you to enable the payment module. But this needs to be checked in order to turn on any of the options for you to be able to actually, uh, you know, take and create order forms. So once you've checked off this payment module, you basically enter your name, your address, upload your uh, logo. This is all stuff that can go on receipts or whatever or show up on your site. You can uh, select what currencies you would like to pick. Uh, usually it's going to be dollars for most people. This is a really cool uh, option, which is you can choose uh, your payment management page, your receipt page. Um, th th this is really neat. So basically what this means is that you can create order forms with Fluent Forms and your customers, when they log Log in, of course, using WordPress's own user management system. Uh, you can send them to an order history page where they can view their past orders. And even in the case of subscriptions, if you're running a membership site, um, you can actually allow them to manage their own subscriptions right there on that page. This is actually pretty cool for a forms plugin that they've got the ability to do that. Obviously, if you go to payment methods, you would set up your payment methods, Stripe, PayPal. You got some other options if you turn them on. And then you do have coupon capability in here, which is actually interesting. I don't have this one turned on at the moment, but if I go over to another page where that we do, and I can show you what this actually looks like, I think it's under payments, do, 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 payment settings, coupons, and if you go to add a new one, you can see you can give your coupon a title, a coupon code, of course, your uh, discount amount, minimum purchase, are they stackable? Um, and the way you would do is you would just apply it to a particular form on your site. So if we wanted to create a... Um, a coupon code specifically for the drama tickets, we could totally do that. But this is how you would actually apply these things. It's not going to be uh, on a per product basis because you're not really managing products with your forms plugin. You're just applying it to that particular form. And so that's how that would work. And you can, of course, limit coupon usage. Now, as long as you've got that payment module turned on, you're going to have these options right down here in Fluent Forms, where you've got these new available fields to you. And this is basically what I use. Here we are in the back end of that form that I just showed you for them buying tickets for this drama play. And you can see that, like, for example, right here for the family pass, I've got it selected as a drop down. And basically, you have the item name and the price of it. 
item name price of it over here in the settings okay and if I select family pass you saw that it adds thirty dollars to the order summary if I go down here to another ticket type this is for premium tickets um, same exact thing the item name and the price and, okay and you just play around with this until it looks right on your screen and the, but these numbers here are the actual price that will be added to the order if they select that as their price um, the product that they want to purchase. And I can also, I'm using drop downs, which is called a select field, but I could have it be uh, check boxes if they wanted to do more than one at a time, radio buttons, single item at a time. There's different ways of presenting these things because this is a forms plugin. There's just lots of different options uh, to it. Um, if we went on down to the input fields, you'll see that we've got things for item quantity. I'm not actually using this because I'm using the drop down options instead. But basically, if you if I were to put an item quantity field into this, then I would choose which uh, product or payment field that it's attached to and I can actually order more than one at a time. So for example, um, if I had a uh, premium tickets here, I could I could say oh, they're going to buy one and then I could put an item quantity, which I would they could just enter how how many premium tickets they want and the order summary would automatically do that multiplication and add that many items to their uh, field so it's actually really really easy um, payment methods uh, payment summary the payment summary it's that will go right here it's not really an input field it's just it p displays that nice table display right here this is the order summary field Okay, so it's it, it's pretty easy. Now I did find that you you know you'll want to play around with it a little bit, and you'll want to test it, and probably run some test orders. But you can just play with it and design a form that is the easiest possible way for your uh, customers to use, and also that when these items display on your receipts and in the order summary, that they actually look okay. Because that's the thing, you're not really managing products with this. Literally, the way that you manage your products is basically just the way that you enter these things into your fields. It's not as if you're managing an actual set of products. I hope that makes sense. Then when you go into the settings for that payment form, you know, obviously we can uh, set our confirmation type so we could take them to a thank you page or something like that. We're just keeping it super simple. It just says thank you for order and it, we got this little code in here that will display their order summary. Super simple, but you can make this more interesting if you wanted to. Uh, if you go over to the payment settings, you can customize some things if you wanted to override the general settings um, and, uh, and map their information to their user profiles and all kinds of stuff in here email notifications obviously you're going to be sending some when somebody fills out an order form but you can send email notifications anywhere you please um, you could even do it conditionally based on what they order or information they enter on that form and you can send those email notifications to different people all kinds of capability here under other confirmations, you can have it so that what happens like after they fill out that form changes based on what they ordered or information that they entered onto the form. We're not really using that here. Under uh, marketing and CRM integrations, this is where you would send the data off to different places if you want. If you want to send them off to a, a remote CRM or if you're using Fluent CRM, it's going to become really easy because they're made by the same people. But you can even send this data to Airtable, to Google Sheets, anything that you want. Um, you, there's also a webhook, so you can send it off to things that even that Fluent Forms doesn't directly integrate with. And it also works with Zapier directly so that you can use everything that Zapier can enable. So basically you could do anything you want after people fill out these order forms. So there you have it. That's how you can create a payment form with a good solid forms plugin. Now, if you want to dive deeper into all the little ins and outs of how Fluent Forms can customize these order forms for you, you can obviously check out their help documentation. It's actually very good. There's a lot of capability inside of Fluent Forms. Some of it's really obvious. Some of it, you got to dive into the documentation to see, oh, cool, it could do that. And that's kind of the way it is. Now, I want to be clear. Fluent Forms also is my favorite forms plugin. It's what I use personally on my sites and on all my client sites where I'm responsible for making a form. But it's not the only option. So if you've got Gravity Forms, if you've got Formidable Forms, Ninja Forms, WP Forms, they all do this as well. There's all Each one is going to have its own little ins and outs. You can consult their own documentation on it, but they all do it. You can create order forms with those things too. 
So the big thing here is that if your needs are fairly simple, you could even do some sort of complicated stuff with these forms plugins, but if your needs are simple, you don't need a full shopping cart like WooCommerce. You don't want to go ghetto with like putting uh, just embedded PayPal buttons on your site. You want to have a real order form that looks professional for your business then check out these Forms plugins. And in my case, if you're going to ask for my recommendation, it'll be Fluent Forms. A lot of people, they get these things and they do the simplest things with them. They just make simple little contact forms or simple little lead generation forms. And they forget that these Forms plugins can usually do a heck of a lot more than that. Okay. So anyway, that's what I did for this one client. Actually, it's more of a volunteer thing. I help maintain this homeschool center website for them. Um, and uh, if your needs are similar, check out that as an option. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help you out. Talk to you later.